Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. Right there is Tucker. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> You're so close. And in this video, we have got perhaps the best pickup truck for our family life situation. We are in the 2024 brand new Honda Ridgeline Trail Sport. And in this video, we're going to tell you just that, how it fits our family of three. Stay tuned. It is springtime here in East Texas, and you know what that means? The pollening is happening. Thanks to our friends at carcover.com, we were able to get a custom perfect fit car cover for my 2013 Chevy Cruze. They know it's important to keep your car protected, and what they sent me was their Gold Shield 5L car cover, which beats all its competitors for many reasons. It resists all types of extreme weather conditions, such as snow, and is 100% waterproof and water resistant. This is the ultimate car care cover for storing your vehicle and protecting it while outside. The soft fleece lining is sure to protect your vehicle's paint and finish while it is underneath. And this car cover was so simple to install, I was able to do it myself for the very first time in under 15 minutes. It comes with a couple clips for the front and the back and a lockable cable to secure it across the middle. So this car cover is not going anywhere and it will help me keep all that pollen out here in the springtime in East Texas. Huge thanks to carcover.com for providing us with this Gold Shield 5L cover for my Chevy Cruze. You can get one for yourself. Simply follow the link down in the description below and enter promo code GT Garage Talk in the coupon field at checkout for a discount off your first order. All right, Holly, another one of those situations where you've got more wheel time than I do yeah. in a vehicle. This, and a little bit of unexpected wheel time. That's true. That is true. <laughs> this is the second time we've had the Honda Ridgeline, but the first time we've had this truly off-road focused trail sport model. We'll get into all of that. No, unfortunately, we have not taken this off-roading, but we can say what it's like in real world scenarios. All that aside, what are your thoughts? What have been your initial experiences with this one? Well, I like having a truck that's not necessarily a big truck. Yes. Fits in our garage. Fits in our garage. That, thing, that being said, some of the areas where I would have preferred uh, better maneuverability from a smaller truck, it still kind of feels like, like parking. Mm -hmm. It still kind of feels like you're parking a big truck. Yeah, the steering uh, ratio is kind of slow and it does not have a great turning radius, which is kind of surprising. And then to the point, yes, it fits in our garage, but just barely. Yes, barely. <laughs> it's fairly long for the segment and it feels pretty wide, which... It's, it feels like it's wide, but not on the inside. Um, no, oh, I mean, we've got this nice big panel here. There's a lot of room in here. I don't I feel like it's pretty spacious in here. We did have it loaded down for an unexpected uh, trip to Dallas, overnight trip to Dallas. But uh, we'll talk more when we're talking storage. There's even a trunk in the bed mm -hmm. that is weather tight sealed. So there's more storage okay, than we- And we tested it. Yes, there's more storage than meets the eye here okay maybe okay i okay. guess it just feels like i i just don't like the way it feels when i park okay okay fair point fair point for being a small truck yeah what are your thoughts on the styling of it the styling has never been my favorite really okay yeah um just because it looks a little funny to me okay um especially towards like the front is fine yeah. Like looking at it from the front, it's like the side view where the back comes down. That is not my favorite. I don't, I don't love the way the grill looks either. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I know I'm kind of knocking it. You, <laughs> you sound like you want to buy it. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, so I, I feel like this one fits what we would need from a pickup truck. But yes, there are some things. This will eventually get redesigned on the new Pilot platform, which we tried the new Pilot recently, 
in its trail sport trim, uh, but carries on for 2024, basically unchanged. And then to your point about the side styling, this really is a Honda Pilot with the back chopped off and a bed stuck on. So like kind of an afterthought, a little less so than just saying an afterthought, but not a full-fledged truck. Mm -hmm. It is a trucklet. <laughs> so, trucklet. Yes. I do like the color of this one. Yes. Kind of like a bluish. It is green. the same color that we had on the last Pilot Trail Sport we had. And I liked it then too. We both liked. <laughs> so yes. Uh, but this being the Trail Sport leans a little more into the aggressive exterior styling. We've got General Grabber all-terrain tires, which mm. I really like. Uh, some very nice aggressive dark gray uh, finished wheels on the outside. A lot of black accents uh, to contrast. Yeah. Uh, against the blue paint, blue-gray paint. What are your thoughts before we move inside on the tailgate? On the tailgate? I like it opening sideways. Yeah. Uh, definitely Does it doesn't... open both ways? Yes, it okay. opens normal like a tailgate, or you can open it like a door. Uh, opening it like a door gives you better access to mm -hmm. the trunk uh, back there in the bed. Yeah, it's easier to get all the way into the trunk yes. and into that special little weather sealed cubby mm -hmm. so yep nice i like having options options are always good yes options are always good oh. okay so moving from the outside to the inside what are your thoughts in here not much has changed not from much the has changed i think they changed the steering wheel mm -hmm. a little bit and mm -hmm. i do like the um i like the perforated edges and mm -hmm. the little um thread the orange the contrasted orange. stitching which yeah, is part I of the trail like sport um, I do think they could do a few more pops of color in here, but there yeah. are a few different textures like right here and mm -hmm. right here. And even though this looks like soft leather, it's really not. No, <laughs> no, it's not. But it looks like it. But I do like this. Yeah. Whatever this texture is, they should have used more of it. Really. Okay. I guess they have it down here a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of here and there. We'll go ahead and talk about a feature that this pickup truck has that no one else in the segment has on the inside tri-zone climate controls so tucker has his own set of climate controls the vents are well as he's sitting now underneath his feet which i guess is a good segue to talking about putting tucker's child safety seat back there in the back all right gearheads first i want to say a huge thanks to holly she did a lot of the legwork and investigation on installing car seats while i was out of town after this arrived but I want to talk a little bit about storage back here and then we'll put his car seat in. First, I really like the 60-40 split bench rear seat with the 40% being here on the passenger side because that's typically where we put Tucker's car seat, which opens up to give you a fairly flat load floor. The best under seat storage in the midsize pickup truck segment by far. This is uh, what you want this truck for very roomy and spacious back here. We do also get a full down center armrest and we get rear air vents back here for the Trizo climate control. You may have noticed Tucker was sitting in the middle here. There are tethers all the way across back here, but the most tethers are on the outboard seats here. There is a top uh, tether location down here. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Holly will also talk about that when we come back to her. But yes, uh, very interesting unique segment uh, offerings back here in the back seat and no folding rear seat backs so that means there's no tethered back here that I had to attach but let's get Tucker's car seat put it in rear facing and then we'll talk about top tether situation another thing I really like about the pickup truck is how shallow or how easy it is to reach over the bedside rails which is where I was storing this uh, just a moment ago this is Tucker's Graco Extendafit child safety seat. It is the one he rode in when he was rearward facing. And as you can see, I'm gonna have to move my front seat forward uh, because there's just not enough room in the back seat for this big car seat uh, as it currently sits. We'll get it comfortable back here, kind of move it around, get it situated into place. There you can see how much room does that leave me in the front seat? Uh, well, yeah. It's not great. My knees are actually in the glove box. I'm sure I can fig fiddle with the seat back recline just a little bit. But the good news is, 
kids don't stay rear facing for long. So we can bring him around and put him upright. All right, this is the part where Holly did a lot of legwork for me and I thank her so much. She had it installed in the center seat. We do have one lower tether here and she borrowed from the passenger seat. There is a top tether down here in the very center, but all of that meant this was offset just a little bit further behind the driver and it meant Tucker was right behind us. But this has a unique situation to the whole pickup truck top tether thing in that you kind of do this little bit right here. You fish the uh, top tether underneath the headrest. There is a metal rod back here that you have to uh, fish the top tether strap around. But you can see it now it securely holds it into place. I bring the car seat all the way back and the latch point is actually down here next to the floor. This top tether is just long enough uh, to reach that nicely. And then I just have the littlest bit uh, to snug and tighten this down, but that is very firm and in place right there. And then I already mentioned the top tethers or the lower latches, excuse me, are both uh, found in the seat back, in between the seat back and the seat bottom. Fairly easy to get to. They are body colored, so they do contrast nicely against the black leather. And now we can tighten and snug down Tucker's child safety seat here on the passenger side, just like that. Overall, for a pickup truck, I give it a solid A in that we don't have to worry about folding that seat back down. Now let's check out the storage back there in the bed because there's a little bit of a surprise back there. As we come back to the back of the ridge line, no surprise here, we have a tailgate. It isn't damped and it is actually rather heavy, which is a little bit of a downside here in this segment. You can see I mentioned when I picked up Tucker's car seat, the bed rails are not too tall, which makes reaching over especially for me at 510, something that's very easy to do. It's something I really liked about the Frontier, the Colorado Canyon, and I believe even the Tacoma. They're just bringing the bedsides up so high that you have to reach up and over. Really like how I just can reach across into this one. So that is a huge win for its usability uh, back here in the back. You can see we've got some LED lighting on the sides uh, back here that really illuminate it very nicely. But the real trick is actually when I close the bed or the tailgate, you can see we have the word release here because there's a handle there and this opens like a door swinging wide so that I can get in uh, to the back of the bed here without the obstruction of the tailgate in the way. And now you can see the lighting back here in the back illuminating the bed. We also have this button right here. This works off of the proximity key system. So you can just have your key in your pocket or your purse and you can get into the 7.3 inch or 7.3 cubic foot rear trunk. This is a weather sealed trunk. You can see all the weather stripping here. And we put this to the test in a rainstorm in Arlington. We had our luggage back here. It was absolutely a downpour and it stayed bone dry in here. If you wanted to make this a cooler, you can. You can see that drain plug goes right to the grass underneath us. You see that's also where the temporary spare is. If you had a bunch of loose payload in here like dirt or gravel, that could be a problem if you need to get to it, but otherwise a very nice up out of the way uh, solution and additional storage back here. So not only do we have all that storage underneath the rear seats, but you have 7.3 cubic feet of storage that is lockable back here in the back of the pickup truck. On top of that, we have just a little bit more storage hidden here in the side. This is not lockable, but you can see you can get into that very easily and nicely just to store something that maybe would stay a little bit dirty. And then for putting maybe dirt bikes, Honda does make some dirt bikes, uh, lots of tie down cleats all the way around in the back of this pickup truck as well. So huge kudos to a segment exclusive rear trunk and a bunch of other unique storage options in the back of the ridgeline. So yeah, with the way our car seat is set up, the back tether doesn't reach all the way to where it can be anchored. So I put him in the middle row. Mm -hmm. So we put him in the middle row so that he could um, be tethered in all places. Um, but I don't love having the car seat in the middle. Um, because if we were to get in a car accident, you know, there's just nothing yeah. keeping him from going. I mean, other than his car seat, obviously. But Plus, it kind of cuts into your rear view uh, 
out and that it does, window. Yes, it does cut into, um, which, speaking of the um, visibility out of the truck is not my favorite. Okay, okay. It's not great. We'll pause on that thought real quick because we are turning on the historic brick streets of downtown Tyler, Texas. This does have an off-road tuned suspension more so than the last ridge line we tested. Uh, Tucker, how's your wobbly head? Little wobbly. Little wobbly? What are your thoughts on the wobbly head? I think this is, for a truck, this is pretty smooth. Yes. Um, you can feel some dips and stuff, but it feels more like driving an SUV even. In. And then that's that the, biggest the biggest bump. One. Yeah. You could feel, but it, you know. My experience driving this truck is I don't feel like I'm driving a truck when I'm driving it. Right. Uh, to your point, yes, it feels like an SUV because it is an SUV crossover mm -hmm. uh, because it's, like I said earlier, a Honda Pilot that they chopped the back off of and put a bed on, which is not a bad thing for daily livability. You don't make any of the sacrifices of that truck-like ride. Yeah. But it doesn't have as strong a frame, yada, 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 yada. Again, the intended buyer of this pickup truck is probably not doing a lot of hardcore off-roading, even though this is the off-road trim. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is a, a good compromise in that yeah, area. Yeah, I mean, I think this, to your point, I think it would probably be the perfect kind of truck for, like, our family. Mm -hmm. Like, we occasionally go and pick up, um, you know dirt to put in our garden. We mm -hmm. occasionally get new furniture at a garage sale. That's what I, is it garage sellable? Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Especially with the uh, trunk in the bed. Mm -hmm. uh, but a very usable pickup truck, 1500 pounds of payload back there. So yes, we can load a bunch of dirt back there and do just fine. There's a lot of usability to this pickup truck, all wheel drive, which is very capable. So mm -hmm. a lot of good usability to this sure. and really does make for a nice pickup truck but again to your point the maneuverability of it is where it kind of falls short and does feel like some of the other competing pickup trucks that we've had most notably the nissan frontier but the steering effort is nowhere near as heavy as that frontier was yeah. you and i both complained it felt like an arm workout just to turn the thing yeah. this what's the steering like in this i mean you're driving yeah. one-handed right now <laughs> yeah it's easy to turn it's just i'm not expecting it to not turn not turn <laughs> i mean it takes i mean it felt like squeezing into some of the parking spots you mm -hmm. know so i don't love that and then also it doesn't have like the front cameras to help mm. you park yeah this beast i really wish it did have at least a front facing camera if not 360 cameras i feel like I, i've poo-pooed using cameras in lieu of spotters when off-road but they are a nice addition just to help see where you're pointing you're parking yeah. yeah where you're parking where the lines are yeah I've definitely had to repark this thing several times, which I know if I drove it, I would get better at, but I just feel like that should be one of the advantages of getting a smaller truck mm -hmm. is yeah, that you, better. yeah, you don't have those kinds of problems. Now you had spoken of before doing the wobbly head test, visibility not being great out of this. We do have blind spot monitors here. We have this little bit of extra window here but uh, we've noted Tucker's car seats in the middle. That takes up a little bit of the back. That takes it. Yeah, the um, headrest on both sides mm -hmm. are all the way down. That takes up most of a window mm -hmm. back there. And then I feel like these back windows don't go far enough back yeah. okay. to make up for it. They are big windows on the sides, yeah. but they, sh they stop a little bit too short to make them useful for okay. not being able to see out the back in my opinion. And I am a person that I use the mirrors. I use the They're back, nice and big. And I also use my head. Yeah. Um, but it was a pretty much useless for me to look back behind me yeah. driving in like Dallas traffic or something like that okay. to see everything that I felt like I needed to see. Some other interior comforts here. We already talked about dual zone climate control. We do have heated front seats up here that remember where they were set. That's mm -hmm. nice. 
we have a two-person memory on the driver's seat that is tied to the key fob. So we are always only given one key fob. We are given key fob number one, which is my seat. Uh, you noted that it reprograms every time we start the vehicle to number one, but just a simple yeah. button push puts you back into number two over there. Oh yeah, after he explained it to me that it was set to the key, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that is kind of convenient. Yeah. If, if we were both driving it, that would be... If we owned it, it, it we would work it, well. that would work. I don't. It, the seat does set back to let you in and out mm-hmm. of the car, I guess. I, as a short person, I don't love how far back it goes because I almost have to get off of the seat yeah. <laughs> to get it started to put it into my seat position. Yeah. Um, so it's just a little annoyance, I yeah. guess, every single time. But that is tied to the key fob. It is a nice small. No, I'm talking about fob. the natural. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, what about storage in here? We kind of glossed over. Glossed over. There is a lot of storage, and I do like the cubbies that we have. So we have like a little cubby here. I love the this cubby in the door and mm-hmm. a cup holder over here, but this cubby is my favorite. Um, How many cup holders are in this, this thing? This little cubby is yes. my favorite too. And the, it's perfect for lipstick. Or <laughs> lipstick sunscreen. Holder, or sunscreen as we have right now. Um, I like that. Ooh. Decent sized glove box right here. You can lock the trunk uh, back there, hidden behind in there, but uh, not really damped. And it's hitting my uh, reflex point every time I try drop it down. So I'm kicking, uh, but fairly good sized glove box there. And then the space under the seat back there. Yes. Love that. The seat pops up mm-hmm. so you can put something even bigger back there. But I used that all the time for my purse. Um, some uh, computer equipment, like all kinds of things. I would say this and the new Toyota Tacoma probably have the best underseat storage in the back seat. This having the best in the segment, followed by the non hybrid uh, Tacomas having better um, underseat storage than most in the segment. But yeah, very nice 60 40 split bench seat. So very convenient for uh, getting in and out of stuff back there other driving impressions power and acceleration stuff like that uh what are your thoughts there i think driving it has been nice it's been yep. normal what i've expected like in the as far as power goes it it can scoot up in mm-hmm. front of things i mean i wouldn't say it's a super powerful truck no. but it it's enough to get you here and there and i was driving in dallas traffic and scooting onto the highway and stuff like that with no issues. Yep. In a segment that is qu- quickly ditching the V6 engine for turbocharged four cylinders, this is one of the two that still gives you a naturally aspirated V6. It's a little on the low side of power in the segment, but not being turbocharged, just being a good naturally aspirated V6, it works fairly well, uh, no complaints but I'm surprised you haven't hit this button just yet. I already did. The engine start stop button. Uh, I already defeat. did, you yeah. missed it. Okay, <laughs> but yeah. I, yeah, the engine start stop is a, is a bit annoying. But uh, other than that, fa- fairly good. Worked for you getting to and from Dallas at, mm-hmm. and made for a good, comfortable road trip vehicle for us, even loading it down as we did. Any other thoughts before I uh, find the window sticker and we talk price? I don't think so. Okay. All right, window sticker on this. First, we'll talk uh, EPA rated fuel economy, 18 city, 23 highway, 20 combined. Since I reset it, we're seeing 20.4, most of that being highway, but we've also been tooling around uh, in city driving. So I'd say fairly accurate uh, to the window sticker care to guess the manufacturer's suggested retail price 48 no no higher yeah oh yeah oh is it because it's the trail sport yeah oh okay 55 yep Fifty-five thousand nine ninety-five. so 56 if you want to get super technical yeah. but uh price is right rules yes fifty-five thousand nine ninety-five. Yeah. so i guess a trail sport would not be as expensive 
a non-trail sport? A non-trail sport. Right. That's what I meant. Right. Sorry. Right. Um, that does add uh, some, like I said, the wheels and tires. We have an oil. And the tires are nice. Yeah, we have an oil uh, skid plate underneath to protect the oil uh, pan mm -hmm. from damage off-road. And it does give it a rugged look, which is very popular. I, I feel like this pickup truck is going to be very popular uh, for the uh, segment that really likes Hondas. They advertise it with dirt bikes in the back, mm. which is a big selling point for them. So I do think this is a strong contender in the segment, especially for families like us who don't need a traditional pickup truck as much yeah. as they need the, the functionality of a yeah, bed. The gas mileage is better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's better than a big old F-150. Right, right. <laughs> so, well, there you have it. If you want to see more from Holly from Tucker, some behind the scenes stuff, go find her on Facebook and Instagram at Female Consumer. You can find all things GT Garage Talk at GT Garage Talk, Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, YouTube, threads, all the things at GT Garage Talk or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com. But as for us in our city life here in the 2024 Honda Ridgeline Trail Sport, got to get them all in there. Until next time, gearheads. Bye. All right, let's see how well you can park this beef. I'm not. I'm going to pull up here. I'm going to let you take it and park this beef for me. No, no, no. Don't turn it off. No.